In this video, I want to bring you along as I install a roof heating system that keeps ice and snow from building up along the edges of roofs during winter. I'm going to be installing a system called Edge Cutter. It's from a Canadian company called Heatline. I've installed some of their other products before, water supply and drain uh, line uh, frost proofing equipment, but I've never installed this system before. And it's quite a bit different than regular roof heating systems. It uses this radiating panel here. This is uh, aluminum. The system is called Edge Cutter. And as you're going to see, this slips up underneath the shingles along the eaves, and there's a heating cable that fits into a channel here. This is the heating cable here. It's a self-regulating cable, which means that it heats more or less depending on what's needed along its whole length. So it uses less energy and there's no chance of it overheating. This cable fits into this groove here and it's held in place with this channel that snaps down over top. At least that's the theory anyway. Um, as I said, I've never installed this before. So let's go up top and see how the first part of the installation goes. So here we are at the eaves and I kind of expected to run into a little bit of a challenge here, and I did. Although the shingles aren't supposed to be nailed down right along the eaves, where the edge cutter aluminum extrusion is supposed to fit, it was kind of sealed down. And there were also a few nails that were close enough to the edge that I couldn't slip this in. I couldn't slip it in without doing a little fancy footwork. So this small pry bar, it helped me to loosen the shingles at the eaves and it did help me to pry out the odd nail that was around. There were also some roof staples and I used a reciprocating saw carefully and slowly underneath of the shingles to nip all those through. Uh, it took a bit of time to get this to work. This system would be no problem at all if you were installing it from scratch if this thing went down before the shingles and as I said there are not supposed to be any shingle nails near the edge like this. Uh, so you may have an easier time than I did, but even with my the challenges of this roof uh, It wasn't too bad and now the extrusion Slips up underneath like this Now this probably would stay there just fine on its own But for the actual installation as I go along here, I'm going to be I'm going to be raising this up and I'm going to be, with a caulking gun, injecting some of my favorite outdoor adhesive here, and that would be some polyurethane caulking, just here and there. So it'll glue the aluminum heat transfer extrusion to the top of the drip edge that's here. And it'll sit like this. The shingles are raised up a little bit. They're still kind of stiff. It's, it's probably about uh, 10 degrees Celsius here, about 50 degrees Fahrenheit. So they're a little bit stiff. I'm sure that once they warm up, either in the sun or when we get this cable thing turned on, they'll flop back down again and and be more even like they like they were before. So this is the process of installing the extrusions one at a time. And I'm gonna go along and do some more of that and show you how that works. One of the things to keep in mind is that the extrusions are supposed to be separated by about a quarter of an inch. And that's because aluminum expands and contracts quite a bit with changes in temperature. So you want to give it a little bit of room to do that. And with all the extrusions in place, then we will lay the cable in place. So one section at a time held in place with the, the cap piece, the aluminum cap piece that encapsulates it and protects the cable and helps to dissipate heat too. So I've got all the aluminum in place now running along the whole length of the eaves. There's that quarter inch spacing I was telling you about. And of course, uh, there's gonna be a little bit of extra. In this case, not a whole lot. So I'm marking it. I'm gonna take this piece down now and cut it. It's actually a pretty easy thing to do, given that it's aluminum, as you'll see. As it turns out, a regular wood carbide blade on a chop saw works really well for cutting aluminum. Uh, there are specialty aluminum blades made out there, but just for the odd cut like this, you'll find that your regular carbide tipped blade does 
a great job. You want to wear safety glasses, of course. It's a must because little bits of aluminum are going to be flying around. And the process is really loud too, so hearing protection is a great idea. Now the only thing you need to know about is that whenever you make a cut, you need to smoothen the cut edge because it's, it's kind of sharp now. There's a bit of a burr there. The cable's going to be laying in here. So we want to go gently. The, the casing of the cable is quite strong, but you want to give it every chance you can. So I'm just going to go at this with a little sandpaper and uh, smoothen that up. So now it's time to actually install the heating cable in the aluminum. Before I do that, I want to point out a few things. You're not supposed to power these things with an extension cord. In this case, I'm going to be installing an electrical outlet right under the eaves to plug this into. But each one of these cable packages is custom made. So you specify whatever length you want because they can't be cut on site. It, it has to come from the factory to a specific length. And you can also specify how much of a cold lead they call it, you get. So that's the, the power cord and plug up to the point where heating starts. So the standard is a, a four foot cold lead, which is what I've got here. You can get the cold leads up to 24 feet long. So they make it pretty easy to um, avoid the need to use an extension cord, even if you don't want to install an outlet under the eaves. Another couple of things, each one of these comes with a ground fault circuit interrupter built right in. Uh, this is to make sure that things stay safe and that the shock hazard is eliminated. I'm all set to start laying out the cable now, but one thing you should know about is that the cap, in order to snap properly onto the extrusion, it, it needs to be very clean in here. And all this wrestling around this gravelly asphalt shingle business has put some dirt on top here so just going along with my utility knife and just picking out the bits of, of dirt for that section that I'm working on. Now another thing to notice too this is the piece we just cut so it's shorter than, than standard and this cap is a standard length. What you want to do is you want to overlap the joint. Uh, it'll look nicer that way and it'll help to keep the pieces uh, of aluminum extrusion aligned with each other and it'll also provide continuous protection for the cable. So overlapping is good. In this case we're only overlapping about four or five inches but I think that's fine. Uh, as long as it's at least a couple of inches then it's going to serve that purpose. So I just noticed here on this piece of aluminum it's a factory edge here but there's a little bit of a burr and our aluminum's already in place, so it's kind of hard to get in there and sand it. But the nice thing about aluminum is that it's soft enough that you can easily chamfer it with a utility knife. You just want to make sure that there's nothing here that's going to be sharp, because the cable's going to be in here, and that cable is going to be moving back and forth a little bit as it heats and cools. So you don't want anything that's going to rub through the outer casing. So it's time to snap all this together. The cap uh, rests on the top catch there and sits there and then use some pliers to snap the bottom in. And it, it goes together with a satisfying kind of click. Yeah, it's all buttoned up and ready for the next section. So all the caps are in place now. The cable is routed into the system from the end that has the cold lead and we're just waiting for some cold weather to plug it in.